Hi, Bill here. I'd like to talk about attacking the king. One way to attack the king is to keep it trapped in the centre, in the middle game. So in this case, the white bishop is stopping the king from castling. So the king tends to be easy to attack if we can keep it in the middle of the board. In this next position, white, black can or castle has to be into check. That's another way to keep the king in the centre. So if black cannot drive this bishop away or block it, he won't be able to castle. Another way to stop black from castling is to attack the f8 square with the rook. Another way is to have a knight, particularly if this knight was guarded by a pawn, it would stop black from castling. Here, white stops the king from castling as it is tied down to the pin knight. I've added some more pieces, so again, black can't castle, otherwise he'll lose his knight. And this time, black has a knight pinned on the diagonal, so again, Black's king is caught in the centre. This time, the king is tied to the knight, so the king cannot castle. If the knight were to move, then it would be impossible for Black to castle because it would be through check. Okay, so let's see. So now we'll have a look at the king. So in the middle game, you like to have a, a good pawn cover in front of the king. Your pawns are missing. In this case, no pawns at all. King tends to be quite exposed, and the other side will attempt to bring their pieces up, particularly the queen, and attack. So this is a pretty typical setup after both sides of castle king side in the middle game. So the pawns are unmoved, which gives the king extra protection, and the rook is defending the back rank. The um, it tends to be more difficult to attack the opponent using a pawn storm as it tends to open up your own king. So you tend to get more peace early attacks. When you've castled on opposite sides, it's quite different. The um, You can throw, throw up the pawns, so in this case white could throw up the kingside pawns at black without any fear of opening up his own king. So what white could do is advance his... Uh, so Assume this is the middle game. Advance the H pawn, and Black is um, advancing his B pawn. White wants to go to H5, swap it off and open the H file. Black wants to play B4, swap it off and open the B file. Okay, so pawn storm. Pawn storm is where you throw your pawns at your opponent's king position with the aim of swapping off or removing their pawn protection. So in this case, White charges up the H pawn. The idea is swapping it off and opening up the H file. So th this time, Black has moved his H pawn forward. So White charges up with his G pawn and just aimed at swapping off pawns and opening up files. This, this time, Black has a pawn on the fourth rank, which m makes it a bit quicker. White to start engaging the pawns and opening a file so the pawn comes up and just one more move and White has opened the G file so he wants to open lines against the king in the middle game you want to open lines against the king files even ranks diagonals okay so White's got double pawns but even then the double pawns can, be, can uh, charge up and uh, break up the king position if Black takes the extra pawn's not worth much, double dice later pawn, and white has opened the g-file. So, say black does something else, white swaps it off, and now white can start charging up with other pawns. So we're assuming rook takes pawn's not possible because white's got extra pieces on the board. Okay, so now we have the good pawns. So, the best pawn to have generally is the f-pawn, if you want to move a pawn up in front of your king. Because after moving the f-pawn, the king is on an open diagonal, but you can always move it in the corner, where it's relatively safe. And with the rook behind it, you can charge it up. The idea is if black just ignores it, he's now in a bit of a pickle. If he moves to g6, we get this formation where if the queen gets into he he here and here, it will be mate. 
and if there's an exchange the black king position will be weakened so sometimes you get a, a pawn storm going with the king's bishop pawn okay so mate threats can help uh, weaken the king position so this is this is a pretty common sort of king formation you have with the castle king so here white certainly mate with queen and rook so black defends by blocking with the pawn but that does loosen his pawns a bit in front of the king he may be open up to a sacrifice on this square with say a bishop or a pawn could come up and open the file this time white has a battery of a queen and bishop threatening the h pawn so black's got a choice he could block with the g pawn or the f pawn he moves the g pawn the f pawn he does open this file sorry this diagonal and if he open if he moves the g pawn he has weakened the black squares around the king when all the pawns are on the white they do not defend the black squares so white will attempt to get the queen into those black squares the other thing is by moving the pawn forward it makes the pawns more prone to a pawn storm so you can put pressure on your opponent's king position with mate threats okay so this time the queen's not on the same diagonal so black can defend by moving up the h port so sometimes an attacker threatens mate with a queen and a knight so the pawn can block the attack this time the queen attacks on the diagonal now there was a game like this where a player who is uh, now GM uh, Ian Rogers um, when he was in a junior tournament maybe it was his first tournament he played um, h6 and his opponent went mate so but the correct move is g6 blocking the attack Okay, so again, now this time, black could defend by moving the h-pawn, but he, instead he can move a piece, which keeps his pawns unmoved. One of Steinitz's principles, Steinitz was the first world champion, was don't move your pawns in front of your king in the middle game without a good reason. Okay, so now we've got uh, a bit of pressure on h7. The queen attacks it, the bishop attacks it, the knight defends it, the king defends it, but... Uh, The, um, the rook's threatening to take the knight. So let's just see what happens here. Okay, so knight blocks, blocks but uh, the cost of sacrificing a pawn. So here's another way the bishop defends. So and this is another way that black stays off mate without uh, moving a pawn. So the bishop moves and defends the h pawn. This time the queen moves across and defends. So the queen moves, defending the h pawn. Okay, now this time we look at some attacks on the g7 pawn, the middle pawn, or the knight's pawn. So we had a look at a few attacks on the h pawn. So, in this case, black can block the attack. And this time the queen and bishop attack. So there's a choice of ways to block. Black can move the pawn forward, but that would sort of leave weak black squares around the king. Oh, we can move the other pawn. Well, that one does weaken the uh, black squares. And in, in this position, white's play bishop h6. White's going to win the exchange. Because when the pawn moves, the pawn was pinned to the rook, so the bishop can take the rook. So this time, the queen and bishop are lined up on the diagonal. So moving the g pawn won't help. It'll still be mate, so we block by moving the f pawn. Okay, so... The knight's on a fine attacking square here, so white is threatening mate, so we can stop that by moving the g pawn. This time we we stop the mate by moving the f pawn. And white's playing the so-called lolly attack, <coughs> nickname lollipop. It's named after an Italian player called lolly, and white is threatening mate. So this is a winning attack with just a queen and pawn. It's very hard to attack king with one piece. <coughs> so white is threatening mate on g7 with the queen, defended by the pawn. So black defends, 
But now the queen can come in to h6 and threaten mate on g7, which is very dangerous. Okay, so this is similar. Queen pins a pawn to the king, queen and the pawn threaten mate. So black defends by blocking. But again, the, the queen can come in and threaten mate. Now here, there's an alternative to moving the pawn. So in this case, white threatening mate with the queen and bishop on g7. If the pawn moves forward, white can win the exchange. Black can move back with the bishop, which has the added advantage the bishop now is under attack. So this is similar. So rather moving the pawn, which would lose the exchange. Black can block with the knight. Blocking the queen, and again the bishop is under attack. Now we can, well, now we can defend by moving the knight to defend the g7 square. So the knight can move and attack the queen at the same time. And the other way to defend is to move back to the back rank. <coughs> That's the drawback of blocking in the rook. Now when the, op the rook's file is completely open, it's a bit harder to defend because you can't block. But we can create an escape screen by moving the f-pawn. Now the queen is threatening to come down here, guarded by the bishop, giving mate. So black can defend by blocking with the bishop. White threatening mate with the double rooks. So you can create an escape square by moving f-pawn. Now here white threatening mate on g7, guarded by the pawn. So black can defend with an x ride by moving the queen across, defending the g7 square from behind. So that's the end of the section, so that just is a quick look at some ways you can keep the king in the centre and also some ways of defending against mates in one. Thank you for watching.